What's going on, everyone? This is Greg with SportsRevExpert.com. Today, we're going to be discussing hip impingement and three very simple exercises that can be done in the gym at home that will correlate to your hip overall health. All right, so in today's exercises, what we're going to be covering is a simple forward and backward plane of motion that the hip is capable of achieving. We all know the hip is very capable of moving in a variety of different directions. It's a ball and socket joint. As such, it has a lot of room and a lot of access to move, and it should be capable of moving. In today's video and the exercises that we discussed here today, we're going to be talking more about forward and backwards translation of the femur as that ball sits inside the socket. Now, the first exercise we're going to be discussing is a Romanian deadlift, the ability to sink the femur back in the hip socket. There's regressions of this. If this hurts, you can do it what is called a child rocker position, where we simply start this on the ground. But eventually, you'll want to work on loading this exercise up in a more aggressive fashion, so long as it's pain-free. How far can you stick your femur back into the socket, stick your butt back, allow the knees to bend, but the knees are going to go back behind the shoes. You should be able to see your shoelaces entirely when you do this RDL version. But again, if this is painful, we can always regress it down to the ground and start with groundwork. So the purpose of this exercise is twofold. One is a treatment, one is a diagnostic. How far can you sink your femur back into the hip socket? How far can you retract that femur back into the hip socket? And then what under load can you tolerate that under? Or what type of sensitivity is the, the hip currently experiencing that prevents you from loading it more aggressively? Before we move on to the next two exercises, I just want to point out there's a clear definition of what you should not push through, and that is a pinching, pain, uh, bony restriction feeling in your groin area as you perform this exercise. If you're getting that sensation, either your technique is not right, or maybe this is an instance where we need to refer out for an image to just to get a little bit more clearance before we try some type of exercise program. Now, that being said, retraction is not the only motion of a ball and socket joint. There are a variety of different directions. We're going to be talking about forward and backwards translation in the femur or the femur as it sits in the socket. So that is a backwards translation of the femur. Now we're going to be talking about forward translation of the femur. Two great exercises, both to train this concept as well as assess your ability to achieve this position and this concept is a split squat and a deep squat. If you struggle getting into these positions, we need to ask yourself, is that because of pain? Is that because of a bony restriction? Or is that because of a soft tissue restriction? Pain does not necessarily mean you have a bony problem. Pain is a variety of different sensitivities to a variety of different structures within the body, as well as the nervous system sensitivity to a particular movement pattern or your anxiety around a particular movement pattern. So pain is multifactorial and we can't judge it just based upon one thing. As such, you should never judge a diagnosis based upon your inability to get into one particular position, but rather a variety of these positions that we show you. Today, again in this video, we're talking about forward and backward translation of your femur and the capability of achieving that. So deep squat and a split squat, you'll need to be able to achieve a lot more of a forward translation of the femur. Split squat even more so than a deep squat. The deep squat is kind of the middle ground between these three exercises. So on one end of the extreme, you got a Romanian deadlift. On the other end of the extreme, you have a split squat. And in the middle, we're talking more of a deep squat. What I've noticed, people who have hip impingement type symptoms that is very treatable through exercises, usually they struggle with one or two of these movements more so than another. If you struggle with all three, that's perfectly fine too. We just want to make sure you're not getting any pinching, bony blocking motions that is preventing that movement and more or less a soft tissue restriction where it feels like tension and tightness that is limiting you from getting into these positions as opposed to a bony restriction or a pinching, sharp pressure type pain with these positions or movements. Okay, and then it's just a matter of finding what you struggle with and then having a systematic way of improving these things. So if you struggle with the RDL, we talked about ways that you can improve that. If you struggle with a deep squat, maybe we need to use a heels elevation to allow you to get deeper into that deep squat, um, to allow the pelvis and the femur to experience that type of motion. Maybe with the split squat, we have to elevate the foot up a little bit to allow you to get into a deeper position there. Again, this needs to all be pain-free, both during and then 24 hours after performance. 
performing the movement to know we can train this movement pattern with no pinching, pressure, sharp pains. But again, there's a variety of different ways to improve one's ability to get into these different positions for exercises. Does not mean you're going to be capable of achieving all three of these positions right off the bat, but we want to develop the well-roundedness and capability to improve in a systematic way of these different positions. And that's what we're trying to teach through a logical and systematic progressive manner. We mentioned a few ways in this video. This, this video is already getting longer than I intended it to be, so we're gonna stop there. We gave you a couple ways of manipulating each of those variations. If you missed them, be sure to look back into the comments section because we're gonna time tag each of these sections for you to review. But also understand this is what we do at Sports Rehab Expert is we help people who have injuries out. So if you're dealing with hip impingement, we have a program designed to help you improve hip impingement that is very easy to get started with, conservatively priced so that, so that price is not a problem with anybody getting started in trying to address this issue. So you can email me at greg at sportsrehabexpert.com. We can talk about what that program looks like and the pricing behind that program. But again, it's very, very conservatively priced so that anybody can have access to this anywhere. And you also get access to me personally through an app where you can ask questions during that time as well too. Now, if you want to take that a step further and go with a one-on-one -on -one Zoom video online consultation with me, that's perfectly fine too. That's priced at a little bit higher rate that not everybody's gonna to want to dive into immediately. That's perfectly fine. That's why we have these two tiered options that you can choose from to help start nudging you in the correct direction. Realize again in today's video, we talked about forward and backwards movement of the femur in the socket. Rotation is also a huge quality that is super important for hip impingement. The workouts that we discussed here go over a lot of rotational movements too. Uh, we might do a video later on as well discussing rotations influence on hip impingement as well too. So if that's something you'd like to see in the future, be sure to comment below and we'll be sure to, to knock that video out sometime in the near future for you.